I'm a software developer, and I want to make the tech industry more diverse. When we develop a product, we want it to be used by as many people as possible, and many different people. Men, women, disabled people, people of color, and many more. When the airbag of the modern car was developed, it was tested and then released to the market. But the problem was that it was only tested with tall male dummies. This resulted in the fact that some women and children died in car accident because the airbag was not designed for smaller people. When the team that develops a product consists of people that are very similar, we run the risk that we forget one or more groups of people that will end up using our product. On the other hand, if we have a diverse team with people of different backgrounds and stories and characteristics, we have a higher chance of representing a larger user base of our product. Now, I'm a software developer, and ever since I joined the industry three years ago, I've always been the only woman in my team. And I found some good things about that. For example, the entry into the industry I found pretty easy. I picked out my favorite company, and I asked them for an internship. And even though they didn't have one, they created a position for me, and I could start two weeks later. Later, when I asked my boss why they gave me this opportunity and they created this internship, he said mainly because of my high motivation to learn, but also they were looking to make their team more diverse. Because you see, until that point, the company had existed for eight years and they had never had a female developer until that point. Also, having worked in other industries like the sports industry and the travel industry, I found the people in the tech industry exceptionally helpful. My teammates always answered all my questions. They wanted me to learn, and they gave me the feeling to belong there, and they encouraged me to ask more questions. They always made me feel comfortable, even though I didn't know many things about software development at that time. But being the only woman in a software team has not always been easy. Sometimes when I went to work, I felt like dressing nicely. So, and for that, I got some weird comments from, from colleagues at my company. And one of the guys said, you know, you don't have to dress up anymore. You already got the job. And I was like, oh my god. Do they think that I want to get some kind of advantage with the way I dress? Because this was not at all what I wanted. So I thought I have to change myself. I put my nice clothes on the back of my closet and I started wearing like conference t-shirts and hoodies like the guys did. Now, they approved of that a lot. One of them even congratulated me for becoming a nerd too. <laughs> but I didn't feel very good about this. Not because I don't like these clothes, but I only did it to fit in. So I went back to wearing the clothes I wanted I got some more strange comments, and then it was fine. Then one day, we went to work at the customer's office, and it was my first time there. And I was walking down the aisle with a, a teammate of my company, and then some guys from the customer's company passed us. And one of these guys asked my teammate, hey, dude, is this bring your daughter to work day? And I didn't even know what to say. And then my colleague said, you know she's a fully grown engineer. And the other guy felt so bad about this, and he apologized, and he even bought me a cookie to make up for his mistake. <laughs> so, yes, I don't think this will happen to him again. <laughs> so then I realized at that point that it was not normal for a woman to be in a technical position. And people automatically associate this with something, something else. So in this case, I was my colleague's daughter, even though I was only one year younger than he was. And I wanted to change that, because I don't always want to explain myself why I'm a developer. And also, I don't always want to be the only woman in my team. <clears throat> so I co-founded a free programming course for women that's running weekly to attract new women to software development. 
to show them that it's actually a very creative job that, and that you have to have a lot of empathy to understand the user's needs. And that it's not that we are not like wasted away nerds in cellars with greasy hair and incapable <laughs> of social interaction. <laughs> so, and I'm very happy to say that some of these women are on their way are, or already are software developers now. So I'm very happy about this. Also, I co-founded uh, Women Tech Makers. This is a Google initiative to provide visibility and a platform for women in technology. And I talked to many women and I realized that not only do we have the problem that many women don't consider a position in a technical field, but also many women that used to work in a technical position left many times to work in marketing or communication. And when I asked them for the reason about why they left, they gave me some answers that made me think a lot. And I want to share three of their statements with you. One lady said, my salary is much lower than the man's salary, even though our work is the same. A second lady said, I was the only woman in the team and they didn't take me seriously as a female developer. And the third lady said, I applied for a promotion, and even though my boss said that I was more suitable for the job, they promoted the guy in my team because it was what everyone expected. Now, I thought a long time about this, and I did research on this, and I came up with three main reasons for these problems. The first is men tend to ask for more, more salary, for promotions, and I wanted to find out if this was true. So I talked to many guys in my company and outside, and many of them said, oh yeah, I ask for a raise in every performance review. When I asked the women at our meetups about this topic, they say, oh no, I'm already glad that they gave me a job and I don't want to seem ungrateful and I think they will give me a raise when they think it's time. Well, from my experience, you hardly get something for free without asking. The second problem is the difference of the handling of success and failure in men and women. Men tend to attribute their success to themselves, to their hard work, to their, their skills, and their failure to, you know, circumstances and bad luck. On the other hand, women tend to attribute their failures to themselves and the lack of skills, and they attribute their success not to themselves but to the team and to being at the right place at the right time. And this is all about how we present ourselves. And I also did a little experiment on that <coughs> with a friend of mine who's also a female developer. We went to, to a workshop, like a hackathon, where the main idea was to learn about new technologies and to build something with these new technologies. And we were working and other teams passed by and asked how we were doing. And she answered, oh, we are doing terrible and we almost didn't achieve anything so far. And I don't think that this will go anywhere. And then nobody passed by anymore and the day was over. Some weeks later, we attended such an event again. People stopped by, asked how we were doing, and before this time, before she could answer, I said, we are doing great. We, you know, I've learned so many things in the last two hours. We even started to build something, and we will continue in the afternoon. Then I heard some people go to the organizers' team and to tell them that they are onto something, and I think they do a really good job. In the end, we got to present our project. But guess what? We didn't achieve any more on the second day than we did on the first. It was all about how we presented ourselves and our work. The third problem, and I think this is the most important, is unconscious bias. Unconscious bias is the ability of our brain to categorize events that we experience and, and like categorize them unconsciously. For many things, this is useful because our brain can't handle everything consciously. 
but it can be dangerous if decisions in the workplace are based on unconscious bias. An example for this might be if a man and a woman apply for a promotion and there are only men in the team and the person making the decision is also a man. And unconsciously he might think, you know, the, the man that applied, he, maybe he looks similar, maybe he has similar values, maybe they even went for beers in the last couple of weeks. So he gets this kind of feeling that the man is more suitable for the job. And when decisions are made on a basis of unconscious bias, it's very hard to argue, even if you have facts on the table, that the woman is more suitable. Now, I thought a long time what we can do about this. And free programming courses and meetups for women in tech is great, but I found out that the only way to change this problem is if every woman in technology changes her own situation. We should not wait until the industry magically changes itself. We should be part of this change. So if you are a woman in technology and you feel that you are treated unfairly, if you feel or you know that you get less salary for the same work, you should call to your supervisor. You should stand up for yourself and you should ask for more, more salary because everyone else does it too and it's, it doesn't hurt. Then. Next, take credit for your success. When you did a great job, you can be proud of it. Of course, many times it's the work of the team. But you can be proud of the contribution you made to that team and take credit for that. And finally, call out unconscious bias. Only then do the people working with us have the opportunity to change their behavior. My colleague called out unconscious bias in the guy who asked if it's bring your daughter to work day. And I could see on his reaction that he didn't do it on purpose and he didn't mean bad. And it will not happen to him again. So by changing our own situation, we can also help changing the situation of other women that will later, at the point later in time, work with these people. And I know it takes a lot of courage and it's sometimes hard um, to change that and to stand up for yourself, but I can tell you from my own experience, it feels good. Thank you. <laughs>